always think about the cattle and the sheer milkers and everybody else, but we don't think about the children. No, that's right. I mean, like you say, at, at Gypsy Day at this time of year, there's lots of trucks on the road and cattle everywhere and um, furniture removal and everyone's focused on shifting house and somewhere in the midst of all that are the children. And for them, it's actually a huge upheaval. You know, they're moving house. Um, many of them are changing schools. And uh, the moving house is, is, is a challenge because, you know, they might have had a room to themselves. Now they've got to share. It's a different house, different environment, people to get used to. And school's another issue. Um, again, leaving friends, trying to make new friends settle into a new environment, new teachers, different ways of doing things, um, new uniforms. Everything's changing for them. So it's a very insecure and unsettling time for a child. We also know statistically that when a child changes school, they lose that first term of learning. And that's all about settling in um, the grief of having moved from where they were and lost those friends, getting to know new friends, re-establishing with a new teacher, the teacher getting to know them and reassessing where they are up to academically. Mm. So they lose that term of learning. And that's actually quite a chunk out of, out of their learning year, particularly relevant in those really early years when they're, when they're setting in place the building blocks of the reading, writing, arithmetic things, and they're, they're having that interrupted. And so it can make a big difference to their outcome and how challenging it is for their learning on, in an ongoing way. And so at this time of year, they really need a lot of support with um, some, some of them with extra teacher aid hours to help them with that transition and get them through. Um, so that you know it's smooth and seamless and they don't lose too much ground and have to catch up all the time. And for children who are moving every year or every two years, that's actually a big interruption to the education on an ongoing basis. So we've got to look at, at, at how we can support them better um, through the schools. And they do some amazing work, they really do. But as I said, they do mm. need additional support. And also the children at the school that they've left, they, we always sort of think about the ones who are moving. But the children who don't move, they also have to transition. You know, they have lost friends and they've got new people coming in. So they've got those same grieving type processes as well. So it's a big change in the whole community. And you're halfway through a year. It is, you're halfway through. And, and particularly for older children who might be at intermediate or even high school age, that's actually a, a, a really huge issue when you're starting to work towards setting up for NCEA and you've suddenly changed in the middle midstream. So there's some, some big learning issues there. Do we know whether the records of the child goes to the new school or oh, not? Yes, yes, they do. But of course, the teacher has to take time to get to know the student and assess from their perspective where they're up to in terms of what they're doing with their class and how they, um, what extra needs to be done or where they, where they kind of fit mm. with the class. And, and so the children are going through a, a big upheaval. And for young children in particular, it's a really insecure time. And we see a lot of changes. And, and teachers and families often report um, changes in behaviour. And a lot of that's to do with the stress and the insecurity of, of the changes. And behavioural changes, it's things like they'll um, become bossy and bully, you know, they'll act out, they'll, they'll lash out because they're, um, it's all, you know, the, their world's in upheaval. Or they'll totally withdraw and become quite isolated within themselves. And we also see with very young children when they have that stress and tension, um, we have other issues. Um, it, changes in eating patterns, changing in sleeping patterns, and for the very young, even changes in toileting. They'll start bedwetting, um, they'll go backwards with toilet training, and a lot of that is to do not with medical issues or they're just being naughty, but because it's their way of responding to the stress mm. and tension, because as yet, as little people, they haven't learnt those coping mechanisms that perhaps you and I as adults might have developed. Because you, you think of a school and especially I guess with girls is more than boys, but they've got their their little groups, they've got yeah, they their have. best friends. They have. And how the hell do you break into that? It, it's very, very hard. So there's certainly a, a, a grieving period for them. And so the children are needing a lot more support and reassurance. And also, you know, particularly in dairying, it's a difficult time at the moment with the downturn. And so there's the added stress and tension within the family already without moving house as well. And, um, you know, so a lot of people are saying, you know, the children suddenly being naughty or they're waking up in the middle of the night when they never used to. And a lot of that is actually related to stress and tension rather than poor behaviour. Mm. So whilst, you know, we're spending a lot of time focusing on keeping the business running and, and up and you know, up and going and being financially sustainable and, and we're working probably harder than we ever have because we might be a staff member or two down so that we can make ends meet, we've actually got to remember that there's little people out there who need a lot more support and reassurance. And, 
Mm. And, and to try and keep things as normal as possible, try and keep those normal routines, because that normality provides them with their sense of security and stability, which helps them deal with the stresses, and so you, you can alleviate some of those behavioural issues. But they're still having lunch on their own at school. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of transition for them. Cool. Now, thank you, because we don't, seriously, we just don't think about that. No, no, and I think a lot of people think about, it, you know, the kids are being naughty and they're just playing up because we're moving, but it's actually more to do with the stress and tension, so we need to take that step back and look at the bigger picture and say, what's happening in this child's environment at the moment that's causing them pressure and stress that they're responding in a way we're not expecting. Jerry, thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm.